Hey, what's up, guys? This is Josh from Nightmare on Woodsboro Lake, and today I am joined by a very special guest. Uh, we have Mr. Braden Timmons here from the Haddonfield Nightmare. Uh, how are you doing, my friend? I'm doing great. Thank you so much for having me on your show. Super excited to be here. Hell yeah, I'm excited to have you on here. I've been a student when you told me yes, I was like, wait, no way, what? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, you know, I, I put my feelers out there, but I wasn't sure if, you know, if uh, I could get you on. And then when you said, yes, it, it took me back. I was like, this is happening. Okay. <laughs> Man, I'll, I'll tell you right now, it's very rare that I, I don't like, dude, there, I was on a, a 15 year olds show or whatever, like not to, like around the time, like when we were still in pre-production with Haddonfield and like, uh, it was really cool. Like my channel was a little smaller than it is right. Like, you know, right now. But, um, and, uh, like he, he like reached out to me. He was like, Hey man, like me and my buddy would love to have you on. I was like, you know what? It's the least I can do, man. I mean, like, you know, these are kids that they watch the channel, they watch the show and, yeah. you know, I mean, they actually like, they were competent, like with like what they were saying. And, you know, like I was like, now if it was like, you know, someone that like just was like dicking around or whatever, like, I mean, like, but like, no, these are kids that like actually like knew, like, you know, <laughs> what they like wanted to say and had questions. They were great. So I was like, you know what? Absolutely, man. Like, why not? This, this will be a lot of fun. So yeah, it's, it's very rare that like, you know, if someone reaches out that like, I won't like take the opportunity if my availability is open to, you know, jump on their show and, you know, talk. So, and that's no different with you, man. Like, you know, thank you again for like reaching out and um, having me on. So. Yeah, most definitely. Anytime. Um, so, uh, tell us a little bit about, I mean, most people I think now should know what the Haddonfield nightmare is. Uh, it's available on YouTube. Um, can you, for, for people who might not know, could you give a, a quick synopsis on the film? Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, Haddonfield nightmare, uh, follows the events of Halloween H2O picks up 22 years later. Uh, we follow now John Tate as an adult. We kind of get to see, how he's recovering from the events of Halloween night uh, of Halloween night, 1998. Um, I almost said 78. Um, but in 1998, when he encountered Michael Myers and um, really kind of see what his next confrontation is going to be with it. So um, I, it's a story that I was very excited to tell. And I'm glad that, you know, we kind of got to kickstart that story. So, yeah, that was a, that was a great film. I, I really enjoyed that. And I was like, especially on that hype train that, you were taking like an alternative route and pursuing H2O versus like just following the same old, you know, Halloween, like the, like the 2018 kills, like you, you know, you weren't headed like that same direction. You wanted to, to go on that alternative like timeline. And I thought that was a really cool idea and very different and unique. So that was, that was awesome. Yeah, no, I mean, it, it was almost kind of like I saw, Halloween 2018 and like when I was developing the concept of it I was like well I mean like so I I made like a, a short little fan film in 2018 like a few weeks after I saw Halloween 2018 it was like a quick seven minute one <laughs> shot, shot completely on a iPhone 8 plus at the time and it, it was terrible. So, you know, it's awful. Like I have it actually as private right now or as unlisted on my channel because I didn't, cause it was called Halloween Haddonfield nightmare. And whenever people would look up the Haddonfield nightmare now, like that would come up and like along with the trailers. And I didn't want people to mistake that for like what we were trying to do. Like people were going to see yeah. it and be like, this is what they're doing. Like, absolutely not. I'm not backing this or I'm not getting on board with this. No. Um, so like it, it, it is still uploaded and like maybe occasionally, like maybe I'll eventually post it again just to have or whatever, but just to kind of show like where it started. But I mean, it, uh, that was kind of like the first like fan film I ever did. And, you know, like we were originally, we're going to do like a, a sequel to that. And, um, like, cause I got a camera for Christmas the year that we did that. And like, I, I thought it was like the coolest thing. Uh, where the hell is it? Uh, well, it's somewhere over here. I normally, I normally keep it like up here. I got a Canon T six I and thought I was a filmmaker. Like I got it. And I was like, Oh my gosh, like, let's go fucking shoot something. <laughs> so, um, yeah, that's kind of like where the whole idea came from of like, you know, I, I started doing research on like, you know, watching all the Halloween movies and kind of just like getting ready to make a part two of Haddonfield nightmare and just kind of continuing with with the same people that we had, it was just like family friends and, and whatnot. And, uh, 
like, yeah, it, it wasn't anything serious, but I was like, you know what? No, like after they started not taking it seriously after like they wouldn't show up to meeting, like I was treating it like it was real. Like I was yeah. like, you know what? No, if we're doing this, we're freaking doing this. And you guys are going to be on time but because they're friends. They're like, well, I don't like you talking to me like that and stuff like that. And I was like, all right, well then, you know what? No, we need to do this. If we're going to do this, we're going to fucking do this. Like we're actually going to go out and do this. So, yeah. you know, um, I, I started watching, you know, the, the whole franchise to kind of like branch out and kind of see like what we might be able to do um, with it. I got to Halloween H2O. And I was watching it and I literally like, it just kind of like hit me. Like I went upstairs, grabbed a snack. Like I paused it like about a half hour in and I like kind of came downstairs and I'm just kind of like watching this play out. And like my eyes just kind of like started to like get like super wide. And I was like, holy fuck. I was like, nobody I'm like, well, first of all, I can't stand Halloween resurrection. I know there's a lot of people out there that hate resurrection. What if we actually did what 2018 did but we do it with john like you know like we actually like make it like a a futuristic movie where john tate is now the main character and we do something with him so i was like the haddonfield nightmare it's going to be a sequel to h2o and that's kind of like where the whole idea dawned upon it just kind of like hit me as i was watching h2o and i was like this is the direction i want to go so you know oh yeah that that's awesome um Man, I haven't seen H2O in a minute. I I actually like rewatched it right before I watched the Haddonfield Nightmare to kind of just, you know, segue into that. Mm -hmm. uh, Yeah, no, that was a great follow up. I really enjoyed that. I, you know, I've been really getting into fan films because, you know, Hollywood, a lot of the times is about making a quick buck. It's not really servicing the fans or, you know, their love of of that franchise, per se, I feel like Mm -hmm. sometimes. And it shows in your guys' films that you are like, you love the franchise and that you're, you're trying to do it justice. And so that makes all the difference in the world. Um, That was, that was definitely a big piece of it. You know, I will say when I started writing the script, I, I did struggle a little bit, like in the beginning, like I'd say like, it was like, like I made it through the classroom scene, like, you know, in, in the script. And then I kind of like really started to be like, you know okay like that is a scene in the movie that definitely pushes the plot forward because it's like this is john explaining you know some of the events that you know he encountered but his students don't know who he is or what he encountered right but we are at least getting in john's you know head in that scene but i didn't want the movie to drag on too long and then you know we get like you know the introduction of the the relationship that he has with his daughter after she you know does that courtyard scene with um with her friends and everything um but like part of me was also like you know what i don't want to introduce myers too quickly i want to establish this story like we need to see we need to spend some time with john we need to spend some time with lauren and john which is why you know that scene is kind of like them having their dynamic then we jump to see Lauren's relationship, like, you know, with her friends and how they're getting ready for this Halloween party and all that stuff. And then I was like, okay, now that we've kind of seen like, you know, Lauren a little bit and kind of like even that dinner scene, when Vanessa is asking Lauren about like the conversation with her dad, we find out that Vanessa has been around, you know, the Tates for a long time. And Vanessa still has no idea about like what they've encountered. You know, which is what I was hoping that people would kind of like, you know, put together. The Tates really are trying to keep this behind. So really, the Haddonfield nightmare, how I see it is it's no matter how deep you try to put your family secrets, it's always going to come back and bite you in the ass if you don't like tackle it like head on, you know. Um, And that's pretty much a, a relying message that like is kind of occurring throughout the movie. Like John is trying so hard to put everything or he's really trying to believe that michael myers is dead but part of him believes <coughs> so you know um that that's how i wanted to approach it and you know there are some people that really like that and there are some people that are like well it was a little slow but i enjoyed it and there are some people that just plain on hated it but you know it's to be expected right like oh yeah yeah you're no not everyone's gonna love love your movie and it um i think what really matters is that you know the constructive criticism and the, mm-hmm. and, the and the love that you do get um i i think usually outweighs a lot of the hate you know Mm -hmm. um but yeah i think he did a phenomenal job um i'm excited for like my special boy and to see what you guys do next like 
I, I'm really, I'm, I'm all in. <laughs> so, um, yeah, keep doing what you're doing. Cause that was, that was a good, that was a good film. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I mean, like, we really appreciate it, man. And, you know, like, I think you also said that, you know, like it kind of had like, you know, different callbacks to, you know, parts of the franchise, which is like, I didn't want to like bombard the script with just, you know, callbacks and stuff. But I was like, well, you know what, if like, ooh, we like could put like a little scene here, like in the classroom scene, like, you know, I'm sure you catch on to John Tate, like saying, like, don't start with any of that cult bullshit. And I saw a lot of people in the comments actually <laughs> commenting on that. And they were like, oh, like it's a Halloween six reference. And um yeah, like I, I just uh, I love throwing in like little Easter eggs like that that yeah. don't really like throw this like the main story aside, but it just kind of like adds to it. It's like oh, like that's like a nice little nod to yeah. you know six. So yeah, heck yeah, yeah. You weren't you weren't heavy handed for sure. You were just like dashing it in there so to see like who would pick that up, and that's awesome. <laughs> um, so uh, what got you started in the film industry? Oh man. Uh, well, this is, uh, I mean, man, like prior to making like, you know, I've made, and it, this one's on my channel. It's, it's absolutely garbage, but it's there. And I've debated taking it down forever. It's a short film called the man outside. It's the first film I ever made came out in 2018. It's five minutes long. It's terrible. I, I mean, it is garbage. Like, uh, the quality sucks. The it's like literally worse than eighties level cheesiness, but you know what? First film ever. Um, so I, I just, I give it that, but, um, yeah, like I, I had always, cause like I went to school, like I went to, I went to college. Uh, I, I didn't study film or anything like that. My, my, uh, undergraduate degree is actually in, uh, education and history. So it's like, you know, um, I, I literally the most that I got told throughout college from my professors is that I was a good writer. And then I originally actually wanted to be an actor, like, you know, like that was like what I originally wanted to do. And then I was just, I, I started taking acting classes at the Chicago actor studio in college. Like, you know, so like I would kind of go there every Tuesday night, mm -hmm. um, just, to, uh, for an acting class. And, like part of me was just kind of like, I don't really know if I, if I like the, the acting side of things. I was like, I want to be involved with it. I, I love movies. I've loved it. Like, you know, I got to give my parents like credit for getting me into movies. Cause like we would go and see movies like growing up and everything. Um, but I'd always wanted to make a movie and like, it was like when I was like taking these acting classes and my professors telling me like, they were like, you know what, like you're, you're a really good writer. I was like, you know what, like maybe I can like try and like dip my foot in like, you know, the writing and the filmmaking side, like maybe behind the camera a little bit. So, um, what do you call it? Uh, that, that's what I started doing. I started writing little short scripts. I was actually in one of our meetings. Uh, I was watching the, uh, the new rough cut of Sally, our upcoming short horror film that we're working on uh, later on this year. I was watching that with um, one of our production partners on Sunday and I was actually just going through my email looking for something and I came across this script I wrote it's three pages it's called the close and I wrote it in 2017 and it's it's awful like, I was <laughs> like, I'm like looking at this I'm like dude I'm like holy shit like so I started writing like little scripts like that and like, you know, then it was really when I started my channel, like I started my YouTube channel in 2018, I started talking about horror and I started talking about, you know, Halloween and movies and all that stuff yeah. um, because I loved it. And then I, then it was really like, you know, I saw Never Hike Alone and I was fucking blown away. <laughs> like I was literally, my jaw was on the ground. I watched it with a friend of mine. I mean, I was like, this is really fucking good. I'm like, there's no shot. This is a fan <laughs> film. <laughs> like, <laughs> Yeah, um so good <laughs> yeah i mean like what vincent and what womp stomp is doing man like i mean they they really they really doing a, a really good job right now so you know um and then i saw another film called the spirit of haddonfield that same year made by renee rivas who was an associate producer on never hike alone and vincent plays michael myers in that and I was like, dude, like these fan films, like they're, they're really starting to get up there, which is honestly why I made Halloween Haddonfield Nightmare, that cheap little seven minute one in 2018. Uh, but yeah, like, and then I, uh, then I kind of really started to want to do it. You know, like I was like, I kind of want to base my YouTube audience. Like I want to bring this audience on this journey with me. 
kind of want to take some time and develop something. And it was really in August of 2019 that I was like, you know what? I'm seeing the work that all these other people are doing. Like, you know, I'm like, we can fucking do this too. Like, you know, like we're, if, if these fans are going out of their way and doing this, then we're going to take the time and really develop this too. So really it just kind of came to the realization that, you know, we wanted to take it seriously. Like, you know, like we, like, we're not just gonna like take a, a iPhone and just shoot on the weekends and make <laughs> lighting look horrible or anything. It was just coming to the realization that like, you know, if, if you're going to do this and you want to do this, then actually go out there and do it, you know, like, and that nothing can really hold you back if like, you really are going to take it seriously. And that was what, I, that was what happened to me. It was a complete accident. I had no idea what we were going to be doing. Like Lily, when 2019 started, I thought that we were making Halloween head and field nightmare part two with the people <laughs> that we had. And I had no idea where that was going to go or where that was going to lead. And then by the end, it was like, Oh shit, we're we're writing a feature length script right now, and yeah. you know, like, the, the, like we're this far, we're cast. It, it was just crazy, like the the whole thing. It just it, it was crazy, like you know, like there are a lot of people that like have this idea and they just kind of see it through from beginning to end, and it was like that wasn't the case with us. It was like it was it started as this, it changed to this. And then it, then there was nothing. And then it kind of like was built from the ground up again. Like, you know, it was, it was crazy. So. Yeah. Yeah. It, wow. Yeah. No, that's awesome. Um, so I, I threw in some like random questions too, cause I always mm -hmm. like that to make it fun and interesting as well. Yeah. Like, um, so if you could work with any director uh, living or deceased, uh, who would you want to work with? You know, my, my favorite director is Quentin Tarantino. Uh, I, I love him. I don't think that he ever needs somebody to work with him though, because like, I feel like if you try to interrupt like his vision or anything, like he will just step in and be like, back the fuck up, buddy. Like, you know, um, but I mean, if I can like work with him on something like, Oh, I'd, I'd love to work with Quentin Tarantino, like specifically on like writing a script. Like, you know, I feel like that, but again, like I've watched so many interviews with him and it's just like watching him talk about his movies is like literally about as entertaining as watching a Quentin Tarantino movie. Like, <laughs> I mean, just like the way that he like, just like describes like his process of like going through, like how he gets up in the morning and how he writes a script and, you know, like just where he kind of gets his ideas from. And, you know, I, I, I mean, Inglorious Bastards is like in like my top five favorite movies ever. Like that's my favorite Tarantino movie to date. Um, I mean, and I just definitely think that from like an action storytelling perspective, oh, hundred percent him. But if I was looking more like the horror side, I, I'd have to say Alfred Hitchcock. I really do yes. think that Hitchcock is, I mean, Psycho, in my opinion, is the godfather of all slashers. So, you know, like of like at least like all of the slashers that kind of like came after like, you know, 1960. Like, I mean, Psycho is it really was a game changer to the genre. I also love how Hitchcock gave theaters like a uh, like a time as to like when you need it. Like you needed to be in the theater sitting down when Psycho starts. Otherwise you're not admitted in, you have to watch the movie from beginning to end. And I, I love that, you know, it's like, yeah. and I, and that's something that like, I feel like any filmmaker wants, you know, it's like, I, I feel like, like, I really like what you did. Like when you said that you watched Halloween H2O before jumping into the Haddonfield nightmare, because sometimes you need that quick refresher. Like, it's like, okay, like he, um, we're following a character from H2O. I need to yeah. see where he was at as a teenager. And it really kind of now helps you see, like where he's at as an adult, as yeah. a, as the filmmaker, I really appreciate that because it kind of gets your wheels turning as to, okay, I just saw him as a 17 year old. And there are certain scenes in the Haddonfield nightmare that are definitely reminiscent of scenes that play off in Halloween H2O. So, you know, like the home office scene with John and his daughter, like when they're having that little argument about Michael Myers it kind of very much is like, you know, John and Lori arguing in Halloween H2O. So, um, yeah, but those are the, definitely two filmmakers that I would, I would love to, to work with if, if I ever could. Nice. 
Nice. <laughs> yeah, my my favorite two. I think my favorite two directors of all time would have to be uh, George A. Romero and uh, Wes Craven. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, all those are the, yeah, <laughs> two two really. I mean, George A. Romero, dude, Night of the Living Dead, the classic. You know, like I mean, got it, yeah. got to love that. And then you know, Wes Craven, what a damn genius he was with bringing us Freddy Krueger. And you know, I know it was Kevin Williamson that wrote the script for Scream, but you know, yeah. the, for him bringing in Ghostface and everything, like, oh, just awesome. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, Scream is like one of my favorite films. Uh, it's always tied between Friday the Thirteenth and Scream because mm-hmm. I, I really liked what Scream did for the horror genre because you know there was that that lapse of time you know between the eighties and when the nineties were starting off that mm-hmm. horror wasn't you know as prominent it wasn't like it was going through a phase. And mm-hmm. so them to refresh that and like, you know, play off these horror tropes and like the, the fact that he went really meta with this movie, which was something unique too, mm-hmm. um, was brilliant. Yeah, no, I, I definitely agree. Um, I mean, and that's just one thing I love about the horror genre is like, you've got the, the thing that really just strikes me about horror is literally it's just broken off into so many different sub genres. Like, you know, it's like, you've got the slashers, you've got the paranormal, you've got the thrillers, the sci-fis. I mean, it, it's just really like such a, it's like the only genre that has all the, like, I mean, you've got the fucking horror comedies and like the yeah. horror action stuff. Like, I mean, even like with, Jordan Peele's nope up and coming like it's being classified as horror but it's like also sci-fi adventure thriller all that stuff like it's yeah. really the only genre that has a cascade amount of possibilities like with any movie like you know? yeah yeah it's not it's not like a it's not confined to a box for sure like exactly. some genres where you know I mean some have some genres have branches that come off but yeah by far horror is the one with like the most roots coming out and, and spreading out. So yeah, for sure. I, I love horror. Um, so what sparked your interest in horror? Oh God. Uh, <laughs> like I've, man, I've been watching this stuff since I was in like second grade. Like that's when I really started to get into it. Um, I mean, like it was always just like, around halloween like you know just like the the trick-or-treating and i mean i i mean my girlfriend tells me all the time i have a big sweet tooth and that probably dawns from all the halloween candy i would eat as a kid you know so it, it was just like the the getting of the candy and just like the leaves on the ground and like we always used to i mean my parents again i gotta give them a big you know like shout out because they threw yeah. these enormous halloween parties and then they allowed like me and my sisters to you know, throw our own Halloween party. And like, it was always like, it literally always came down to every single year at school. It would be like, Hey, when's your Halloween party? When's your Halloween party? Am I invited to your Halloween party? So like, it was like that. It was like that though. And my dad, like what he used to do (coughs) buddies, they spent like, you know, a whole week getting it together. They would uh, use just plain white sheets. They would take out the regular light bulbs. They would put in black lights and they would, they would hang sheets. They'd make a sheet maze in the basement for everybody to go through. Everybody fucking loved it. And um, yeah, my dad and his friends, like they would be there and they would just be down there. They'd be like a line, like everyone would get in line. Like it was a real haunted house. You'd send in like two or three people at once pitch black it was literally all black lights fog and sheets and it was it, i was at that age when i realized you really don't need much to scare the shit out of somebody <laughs> like you know you just need the fog the white sheets and the black lights and then you just put the monsters behind the sheets and they'll pop out and come out at you terrifying and everybody loved it so it was really that that got me into it and then i started watching the movies and then like you know the first horror movie i ever watched like i, I actually watched two sequels before I did um, any of the originals. I watched Friday the 13th part two and Halloween two. Uh, Friday part two is the first horror movie I ever watched. So Jason is the first one I ever saw on screen, which, hence why I absolutely love <laughs> Sackhead Jason. I oh, think, yeah. I mean, okay. Sackhead Jason is like my favorite Jason, like, you know, and, and it's because part two was the first movie I saw. Um, and then uh, Jason, I found just, like as being a badass, I wasn't really scared of Jason. Freddie, I thought he was, I thought he was funny, you know, yeah. um, Chucky, I was just uh, <laughs> kind of funny. Uh, 
Michael scared the shit out of me. Uh, he, he was the one that really got me. And it was like, um, just the breathing. I would literally go to bed at night and I, I would just feel like in my closet that I would just hear the breath slamming against the mask. And I don't know, it just, it just really scared me. Like, you know, like, so, um, that's what really got me into horror is like, it was just really, I kind of like eased my way in from getting into the Halloween vibe every year for like, you know, just the Halloween parties and then the candy. Yeah. And then I started watching them and that's what really got me into it. So Hell yeah. That's great. Uh, yeah. Halloween is my favorite time of year. Even before, like I was big on ho- like horror movies. Like, I mean, what's not to like, you get to like get dressed up, you get spooked and it's just like, you know, the whole feeling of autumn is like, you get, there's that crispness to the air. There's just something eerie in the air and just like everything about Halloween is just awesome. I mean, <laughs> you can't beat it. I agree. And I actually, so the funny thing is another thing that like really scared me about Michael is I'm from Illinois. So it's like, oh. I, yeah, like I live in Illinois right now. So it's like, you know, I always thought like growing up, like at least when I was in elementary school, I thought Haddonfield, like I was just like, fuck, like the boogeyman, like he lives in this state. He's always <laughs> like, he's coming after me or something. So like, I mean, I would genuinely get scared like that. Like after seeing the original Halloween, like, again, I was only in second grade. I also loved Freddy versus, I had a deep obsession with Freddy versus Jason. Cause it was new at the time in second yeah. grade. Um, but like, again, just like Michael Myers, like I would always be so scared that even though my school, like you could see my elementary school from like our backyard, but like, I would always be so scared that like, you know, I'd be walking home and I'd see like this man in a white mask standing over by a bush and then he'd fucking disappear. Like I'd like see him like, right. But yeah. like, that's how genuinely scared I was of Michael. And I honestly do think that that's the reason why, like, I, I loved being scared, you yeah. know, like, so it was like, if this can scare me, then it must be like, it's effective. Right. right. So, um, so yeah, like that's kind of, I also believe that that's why like, you know, Michael's currently my, now he doesn't scare me anymore. Now I just always look forward to seeing like the kills and yeah. just kind of seeing what the movie is like going to kind of like bring and what yeah. new elements of Michael they might present or something like, um, but yeah, I mean, he's just my all time favorite. So. Hell yeah. Yeah. There, there's definitely something about that, that, um, just that feeling of the adrenaline going through your system and just like being on the edge of your seat and just your thoughts are racing. And it's just, I don't know, it's like a rush. And mm-hmm. I, yeah, I feel like that, that is a huge part in why I love horrors. I just, I love that feeling, even though like, yeah. you know, you're in the comfort of your home, like, and you know, the likelihood of that half, any of this stuff happening is like very slim. I mm-hmm. mean, depending on the film, like some of the movies, like, you know, scream, like, and the more realistic, you know, and like, well, even Halloween. Yeah. That's realistic. Someone Mm -hmm. could be stalking you and like get into your house and kill you. Like, Mm -hmm. um, I mean, it's just great feeling. (laughs) It Uh, is. So, Hmm. Do you have a, what, do you have any high hopes for uh, Halloween ends? Uh, yeah, I hope that they stick the landing, you know, that that's yeah. pretty much like my high hope right now is that I'm just like, really, I don't think, I mean, I was nervous walking into the star Wars theater for rise of Skywalker. I think I'm going to be more nervous with this one. Yeah. I mean, like after Halloween kills kind of divided the fan base, I liked certain elements of Halloween kills overall. I didn't really like it. Um, but like, I'm going to be like, just sit in the theater of like when I sit down to watch Halloween ends and I'm literally just going to say a prayer because I'm going to be like, you know, please, <laughs> please just don't ruin this. I'm, I'm hearing, I'm hearing some like rumors that I hope just remain rumors of like, apparently Michael can potentially be getting killed in like the opening scene or something like that. And if like, that's the case and it's more psychological, I know I'm going to fucking hate it. So, you know, yeah. Like, I mean, I, I just, I don't know. Like I, I really, I'm waiting to see the trailer, like before I kind of like, you know, I I'm, yeah. I'm positive right now. I'm still super excited about it. You know, like, I mean, we've had a, like some really good horror this year. I think I'd say like, you know, yeah. 
Uh, I mean, I really enjoyed Scream 5. You know, I know some people didn't, but I really did. I thought yeah. it was a good I thought it was a good start to the year for horror. Yeah. Um, I haven't seen X yet. I've heard really good stuff about it, though. Um, but like, you know, the black phone was fucking fantastic. Just saw that last week. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Like, I mean, I'm looking forward to Nope. And uh, then, I mean, I'd say I think Halloween ends is pretty much my like next big one after no poor wise that i'm looking forward to so you yeah. know I, i've got i I, ha- I have high excitement right now but that can decline depending on how they market this movie so you know. yeah yeah no joke and i'm hoping that like unlike the halloween kills trailers that came out like let's keep it brief let's give enough to you know get people excited but let's not give away too much I felt like in, in the Halloween Kills trailer, like that whole scene with the firefighters, I'm like, like, did you really have to give all of that away? <laughs> yeah, I know. It, it, it was, it's unfortunate that they gave away some of the best elements of that movie in that trailer. And like, honestly, like now that we've seen the runtime of the trailer, I mean, the trailer is only going to be a minute and 16 seconds. That's not long. So, you know, I, I feel like that that's, I feel like that that's good. I feel like that that's a good start. I feel yeah. like that they'll be able to, you know, kind of, you know, maybe showcase just to, just enough to spark some excitement because I mean, that's like a whole minute and a half shorter than the 2018 and kills trailer, like the first trailers at least. So mm-hmm. um, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely excited. I'm definitely getting excited and, you know, rumor has it that it'll be here by the end of the week. So, you know, we'll, uh, we'll see. <laughs> I'm so ready. <laughs> Hell yeah. Um, so what do you think would be the worst way to die? What do I think would be the worst way to die? Yeah. That's a dark <laughs> question, <laughs> but Hey, I like it. I like it. Um, I got to say, I mean, shit, I, I'm going to say uh, burning alive, man. Like, I mean, I, I feel like burning alive would probably be the worst. I would honestly rather drown than, you know, be burned alive because if you're drowning at least like you're in you're in water even though it sucks i'm sure like i mean i mean we've all we've all been there to like where like you get dunked in a pool and like you know you're like you're underwater for a certain period or we try to hold our breath underwater for a certain period of time yeah and we always give in and like you know come up right like right (laughs) it it definitely like it definitely sucks but I'd, I'd just say like, I mean, burning alive, man, like you don't know how long you're going to be like, how long it takes for you to like, you know, I mean, yeah. fuck, like, like you burn your hand on the stove and you like pull it away, like, and it like, it sparks like all the way, like up through your body. It sucks. Yeah. I, so I got to say like, yeah, just burning alive would be, I'd honestly rather take a fucking hatchet to the fucking head than <laughs> get fucking burned alive. I would rather die any other way. Like, I mean, shit yeah. <laughs> nice you know for me i i was always thinking like suffocating or drowning i just don't want i don't know why but that's always just been like i'm like no i cannot go out that way mm-hmm. i felt like you know any other way felt good but burning alive now that you've you've talked more about that kind of still sounds terrifying to me as well yeah um, <laughs> yeah yeah that's, that's a good answer um what so this doesn't have to be specifically horror okay. but any okay. genre um what do you think is the most underrated film of all time underrated film oh my god this is i know i'm tossing some hard ones i was going to say <laughs> these are these are some pretty hard you threw a dark one and then you threw uh <laughs> you threw uh th- this one's hard like i mean cuz i think that there are a lot of underrated films um, I'm going to say Mike Flanagan's Oculus from 2013. Uh, Mike Flanagan is a filmmaker like that has just grown so much like since Oculus. Like that was like his like big first one that hit. I don't know if you've ever seen it or not. No, um, but uh, I highly recommend it. Just the camera work and like the scares and everything in it just like feel real. And like, you know, you're on board with these characters, like from the beginning to the end. And I mean, it's been a couple of years since I've seen it, but I mean, like it, it's, it's really good. I think that Mike Flanagan is a filmmaker that needs a lot more recognition than he currently gets. I know that the man has a nightmare on Elm street pitch that uh, he wants to give being that he's made several films for Warner brothers, including he just wrote and directed Dr. Sleep. 
uh, in 2019. So, which is a sequel to Shining. Um, and uh, I, I mean, fuck, why is why has he not gotten this pitch yet? Is my question because I truly do think that um, you know he uh, he he should he should get that. So, yeah. I was looking at, I'm like, I know I own Dr. Sleep somewhere. <laughs> oh yeah. I thought that was a pretty good follow-up to the shining for sure. Oh my God. Like, I mean, I'm actually, I have the book right here. I'm reading the book right now too. So, oh, nice. you know, yeah. And I mean, it is different than the movie, you know, but I mean, dude, Mike Flanagan had a daunting task to not only honor King fans, but had to also honor Kubrick fans in Dr. Sleep. Yeah. And I think that he did a great job. I mean, like I thought that the callbacks again, kind of like, you know, the callbacks in Haddonfield Nightmare, I felt that the shining callbacks, they didn't really like throw the story aside or anything. They actually added to it. And You know, everybody saw in the trailer that like that was one thing that I saw a lot of fans before Dr. Sleep came out. Like they all thought that it was just going to be like a a big just cash grab like, oh, they're going to go back to the Overlook. No, we see all that in the trailer. That's not until the third act. So you have a whole movie prior that you need to get on board with the story and everything. And then he took all of that, use it as the finale. And it's and it worked. And it was honestly he took. Have you ever read the books or have you read the shining, the book or whatever? Um, maybe I I've, I've read, I've read a lot of like King books, but yeah, I, I, I don't remember if I have or not. I mean, uh, I would definitely, definitely visit it though. I, I love reading. So yeah. Like, cause they, they took the, they took the ending of the book, the shining cause the overlook burns down in, in the book but he used it because uh it doesn't in the movie right like in the book the shining it ends hot in the movie the shining it ends cold and now in dr sleep they took the ending of the shining the book and used it as the finale of dr sleep the movie which i thought was like a great now i have no idea how the book ends yet because i'm reading it but i just think that that's such that's such a smart way to do it like you know like i mean he's a very smart filmmaker and a very smart writer and he also has stuff like, you know, The Haunting of Hill House, The Haunting of Blind Manor. He's got, uh, I haven't watched Midnight Mass yet, but I keep getting told, dude, you need to watch Midnight Mass. So, um, and he, he also has another show coming out this year for Netflix. It's another horror show. Nice. But I mean, like, you know, I, I just think that this man is such an incredibly underrated filmmaker as well that, you know, I, I think that he needs to, I mean, I really do think that this man is like a horror legend like already and he's like you know he's done all of this so yeah no that's awesome um i definitely need to check in out uh oh man (laughs) turn it around and flipping it on me um yeah (laughs) oh shoot now i don't even know if i have an answer to my own question (laughs) (laughs) oh um You know, shit, man, I'm gonna have to come back to that. I, dang, you caught me off guard. Like, no, <laughs> hey, hey, it happens, you know, but that's how hard it is, man. Like, yeah. I honestly landed on Oculus because I don't think enough people talked about it. I saw it in the theater too. I don't think enough people talked about it. And, you know, like, sure, like a lot of Flanagan's, like, I think Haunting of Hill House pretty much established him in a wider audience. You know, because I know there's a lot of people that like Haunting of Hill House now Mm -hmm. Uh, and Haunting of Hill House was also just at Halloween Horror Nights at Universal Studios like the Haunted House was last year. So, like, I mean, like, I feel like that that might have even helped put it more on the map. Um, Not that everyone's going to know who the creator is or anything, but I just think that him, his first like actual movie like that, like really I could remember seeing. I just don't think enough people were talking about it or they don't appreciate it enough for what it is. So, you know, um, yeah, that, that's why I, I picked that. Nice. Um, you know, one off the top, actually, I kind of have one off the top of my head that I really, really enjoyed um, that I don't think a lot of people talk about either is uh, Dead Silence. Dead Silence? 
Sorry, yeah. I thought. Oh no, you're good. <laughs> uh, oh, Dead Silence is fucking phenomenal. James Wan, man. Oh, I love Dead Silence. So Dead <laughs> Silence was actually my first time I ever went to. Now I'm talking about Halloween Horror Nights uh, at Universal. <laughs> The first time I ever went to Horror Nights was I was in sixth grade and they had the three big, well, three out of the four, but they had the Freddy, uh, they had a Nightmare on Elm Street Haunted House, a Friday the 13th one and a Texas Chainsaw one, but they also had a Dead Silence one. And I appreciated the Dead Silence house because I loved that movie. So, and it, it was a really good haunted house too. Um, but I agree. The the whole Mary Shaw thing is uh, definitely oh, wow. agree. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, just the the ending of that film too, like when it like reveals like who's all behind this and what's going on. I was like, I was like, damn, that's that's crazy. Like, you know, the the dad actually being worked like a ventriloquist by by her and like, mm-hmm. you know, like up through his back and stuff. I was like, ooh, that's gnarly. Yeah, but, <laughs> yeah. I <laughs> mean, I yeah, James Wan <laughs> is a very talented filmmaker. Uh, I mean, like shit, like that was his like next big one after saw. Cause like he had saw in 2004 and then I believe dead saw or dead silence was 2007, I think, or no, not even no 2006, I think 2006 or 2007, one of the two. Um, but yeah, like I, I just, uh, it might've even been 05. I don't know. Like, I, I know it was like, it was like. <laughs> Cause I know James Wan started with saw and then dead. Cause I know like on the thing, it says like from the director of saw, whatever. Mm. Um, but yeah, dead silence is, is a very, very good horror film for a fact. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> yep. Let's see. Wait, it says, Oh, it's 2007. <laughs> is it, is it 07? Yeah. Okay. So but- that, so, okay. That means, cause in 07 is when I did horror nights for the first time. So that means that the haunted house was brand new based off of the new movie that had just come out. So, okay. Yeah. Interesting. <laughs> Interesting. Hell nice. yes. Yeah. yeah and, and speaking of horror nights, I've only been one time. I went back in 2017 and it was like uh, the Titans of terror. And it was like the whole um, Michael or Freddie, Jason, uh, Leatherface and uh, oh yeah, that was the Terror Tram that was hosted by Chucky. Chucky. Or whatever. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. They, they had a they had a saw maze there, and uh, there was like the it had like part of it was going through the restroom or like that that from the first one, and walking through that they did such a great job at like it was so realistic, and it smelled like feces in there and like just death and it just was like eerily like on point <laughs> yeah no universal man does a absolutely great job at, at their haunted houses man i will say so this year because i'm going this year too i'm going to the hollywood one i normally go to the orlando um oh nice but honestly like just from seeing some videos of like other you know horror content creators that go in hollywood mm-hmm. the thing that makes it i'd say better is they're more lenient with like pictures and recording and all that stuff orlando you can't like take pictures like even outside of the houses like in the houses i understand but you can't take yeah. pictures with flash shit, like no flash photography in the park or anything like that i don't know why but in hollywood it seems like you can in oh. hollywood you could also um record in the haunted houses and everything which is actually kind of cool so you know could, but also i was talking to my sister about that and she was like oh it's probably because of like you know the um what do you call it? The media influencers and stuff that live in the LA area. You know, it's like, why, why wouldn't you want to showcase the event and get people to, you know, want to come and see it for themselves, you know? Yeah. Um, but yeah, Orlando's quite strict. So I've been to Orlando three times this year is going to be my first time branching off and I'm moving to Arizona next month too. So I'm only going nice. to live like, I'm going to live like five hours from universal. So, I mean, like, that'll be like a morning drive. If I just like want to get up <laughs> and go up to universal for the day i could um but yeah so i I, i'm excited to see what other announcements i know if they've got the halloween house announced this year that's already got me super excited so nice you know yeah (laughs) hell yeah nice that's the only one i've been to is the one in hollywood Um, okay 
I mean, I've been, we actually just went for the first time to Orlando or like the, the, like Disney world over in Orlando. Oh, okay. Florida. I haven't been to the universal out there though. Oh, okay. But yeah, no, I, I really enjoyed the, the one in Hollywood for sure. I think they did a spectacular job on that, that horror nights. So yeah. I, I hope you have a great time. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm definitely excited, you know, so I mean, I'm, I'm looking forward to, to seeing it because I've never I've never even been to the Universal in Hollywood. This whole thing is going to be completely new to me. So nice. Heck yeah. Um, so if you had to survive the night with one of these horror characters, uh, which one do you think you'd stand the best odds against? Uh, the choices are Leatherface, Jigsaw, uh, Freddy, Jason, Michael or Pinhead. <laughs> dang i was really hoping chucky was going to be in there because I, I, i'm like I, I can survive the night with chucky for a fact yeah <laughs> so you know you, you you took you took the one that i was going to say off the list like um i i, I don't know if i'd be able to do freddie freddie's got a lot of tricks up his sleeves like when it comes yeah. to you know being in your dreams and you know because like in the dream world he can he controls all that yeah uh I'm going to have to go. I'm going to have to go with Jigsaw. I honestly think that I can get out of I think that I've got enough brains to figure out what like how to get out of the trap and everything. Yeah. Like I actually always watch those movies. I mean, I de- I have better odds getting out of one of those traps than surviving with any of the other ones that were mentioned. Like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, you know, like, I mean, I'm fast. Don't get me wrong. Like, I mean, I, I'm definitely quick, so I can probably sprint away from Michael, but <laughs> you know, like, um, you know what they say, like when Michael's not on camera, his ass is sprinting. So, you know, like, um, <laughs> no, but I mean, I, I just, I, I genuinely think that, you know, like when you're in, um, like you watch saw it all also kind of depends on the character that you are like in saw like if like i'm the one like that has to go through and try and like save everybody like you know like or if like you kind of get placed it, it was really saw two that started that like where like they and which i i mean i love the first i'd say three saw movies like to death um but like i definitely think that just like kind of figuring out like you know the puzzle piece and everything like I, I feel like I've seen enough of those movies to like where I would know where to look and everything. So, you know, that that's just kind of like, you know, what, what I'm thinking in terms of that, but I could be wrong. You know, we, we've, we've made it out of, Hey, my, uh, my buddies and I, we've made it out of a few of the, uh, what do you call it? Um, what are those rooms that you go in? Oh, the, escape room. Uh, yeah. The escape room. So, you know, we've made it out of a few of those. So I feel like that if we're able to do that, it's kind of like being in a saw trap. You kind of got to find all the clues and the keys and yeah. You know, so yeah. Keep yeah. a cool head. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, for sure. No, that's, that's great. Cause like it is definitely more of a battle of your wits and just trying to keep calm under pressure versus like having some dude coming at you with a chainsaw, you know, mm-hmm um especially in that because it's like fight or flight mode things are like going at 100 miles an hour like at least like like you said you could sit you could like think about it you're like okay i'm I'm in this i gotta find this like i need to find a way to you know unlock these cuffs or whatever you're in like it's it's more of a mental battle but yeah for sure that that was a good good response (laughs) yeah thank you yeah (laughs) um so, um, what was your favorite memory working on the Haddonfield Nightmare? Favorite memory working on the Haddonfield Nightmare. Gosh, where do I? <laughs> okay, um, this doesn't have really anything to do with the kills or anything, but um, so the two cops in the movie, I absolutely love them to death. They're two of the <laughs> nicest guys that you'll ever freaking meet ever. <laughs> I mean, Dwayne, he's like a big guy, but like, I mean, he's like a gentle giant. Um, and then there's Andre who plays Officer Williams. So Dwayne plays Sheriff Baker and then Officer Williams is played by Andre. Uh, Lily love them. Uh, so there's two, two memories. So there's the coffee shop scene. We were filming in downtown uh, Plainfield and um, 
what do you call it? So many people like we couldn't, we didn't close off the street or anything. Like we were just kind of out there filming and people like actually across the street thought that they were cops that were like, cause like they were in their costumes. So they thought that like, they were like shutting us down. My buddy posted on his story, both of them. And they were like, dude, you guys get shut down or something like that. Like, and we were like, no, no, like these are actually our performers. And they're like, holy shit, dude, they look so real. But then there was another day with them <laughs> and we were filming. It's the scene where they find the body of the blonde haired girl. It was the bartender in the um, in the bar, um, but she was found behind it all cut up and everything. And it was like right after that scene, they went over to Dunkin Donuts, which is right across the way. And they walked in dressed, dressed in their costumes, fully attire and everything. And uh, they're ordering their coffee and Andre comes back, like they come back with their coffee and their donuts and whatever. Um, and uh, like, he was like, man, he was like, you know what just happened in there? I was like, what? He was like, so we walked in, we ordered our food and I was getting ready to pay. And the uh, lady at the checkout said, oh, it's okay. We don't charge cops. So they got their coffee and their donuts for free. <laughs> like, Just roll with it. <laughs> right. Well, Dwayne was actually about to correct him. He said too, he was like, like he was like, Dwayne actually was like, actually. And then, and then Andre was like, shut the hell up, man. Like, he's like we're about to get this stuff for free. <laughs> so no, but awesome. I mean, yeah, I, I mean, just both of them together. And then there's like also, um, just also like another thing behind the scenes. I'll have to see if I have like any of that footage still, but um, what do you call it? There's a scene where Dwayne, like it's the scene when they pull in front of the house and pick up the girls before they go to the murder house again. And Dwayne, he's like, we probably, I think it took us like six takes or something like that. But Dwayne, he was like uh, going around the car and he pulled the door handle and the whole door handle came off and, and he held it up like and everyone just starts laughing. So, you know, um, I mean, just really, dude, there's a lot of good memories, you know, I mean, even like with Peter, the guy that plays John, uh, Kate, uh, who plays Lauren. I mean, really, the whole cast and crew, they all really were a great time to work with. And I mean, like, it, it, it's like this, the, I've been really blessed on all the projects that I've worked on so far to have just a great cast and crew to like, where it's like, man, we're going to have a fucking good time. Cause that's what making a movie is, man. It's a good time. And if it's, yeah. if you're not having fun while doing this, then why are you even doing this? Like, you don't want to be miserable doing this. Like, yeah. you know, um, but, uh, yeah, I've been blessed to work with people that like, you know, want to have a good time and everything, but when it's time to be serious and we're getting ready to like roll and call action on a scene, it's like literally it's focus mode. So, you know, that, and that's what I really appreciate. Hell yeah. That's, that's awesome. That those were some good memories. I thought I, that's, that's great. Um, and that's good that you get to work with such great people that, that help create those memories and that are really like, it feels like you guys are probably building up as like a family and uh have that dynamic so that's awesome yeah it it, it really is because like at first like you know the first two weekends i'd say i think that we worked like because we did we filmed haddonfield nightmare in three different production periods so it was like period number one we only worked with peter one time that's the guy who plays john tate like we we filmed his first scene in september of 2020 and we didn't get him back on camera until April of 2021. So it was like, so we only had one scene done with him. And, you know, it's like, yeah, like we had a good time. Like, you know, we talked on set and everything like, you know, but we didn't have a, another thing with him until April. So like, I was just kind of like, okay, like we didn't really talk much through the winter. It was just kind of like, I would update him like where he needed to be and all that stuff. Um, so like then when April came though, and like, we really started to get into the meat of the story. Like, I mean, like we were seeing each other like every single day and we really built like a really good dynamic, like, you know, for a director and actor, you know? Yeah. Um, and it, that made me happy. Cause like, I was like, okay, well, it's like, now I'm just kind of like talking to him about like, you know, like, okay, you're going to be here at this time. And this is what we're shooting and whatever. But like then, like, yeah, like you said, it slowly just kind of becomes like you're seeing each other every day, you know, like and this is like really all the cast and crew. It's like, you know, you're kind of like building like a relationship like with everybody. And, you know, like, yeah, like now it's like he'll text me. Like he actually just texted me last week. He was like, hey, man, like what's going on? Like, you know, like, how's everything going? 
So, um, yeah, and obviously, like, I don't know if you've, like, seen anything online or anything, but we're developing the sequel, so, you know, it's like, you know, we've got another round coming, so, nice. you know, we, we definitely kind of want to stay close and in contact, you know, with them, so they all understand what's going on as well, so. Hell yeah, that's awesome. Um, so, I just got a few more questions. To fire okay, out. yeah. Um, Hopefully these ones aren't <laughs> as hard um, as some of the ones I've been tossing out there. Um, who would be your number one survival guy and your number one survivor girl? This could be from any horror movie, whatever. Yeah. Like, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, survival. Uh, my final girl is going to be Sydney Prescott. I mean, I'm having her all day. Um yeah. I mean, uh, I just think that she's absolutely awesome. Um, and then survival guy, I'm going to have to go with Tommy Jarvis from Friday the 13th. Hell so, yeah. Hell yeah. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> like if, if I can have both of those, like, oh, it's, that's it. Oh yeah. Do imagine if they were teamed up like they're yeah. Oh yeah. Cause you know, Sydney, she's such a fighter. She went and you see so much growth from every film like every scream she you just see her grow mm -hmm. and become this badass no it doesn't take crap from anyone like and will fight to the death like she is just an awesome final girl for sure mm -hmm. and then tommy jarvis i mean you're speaking my language he's like my favorite part of the whole friday the 13th series is like his story arc and seeing him from being you know that that frightened young boy um in part four to you know this confident like you know i'm sending jason to hell like character in the sixth movie so he yeah he's definitely my favorite favorite character and i would definitely pick him too for a for a final mm -hmm. final dude oh yeah good choices for sure yeah 100 <laughs> percent oh, <100%. laughs> nice um so out of all the halloween films um you know even like the i mean i guess you can even out of fan films too because i've i've seen a few um what is your favorite halloween movie i mean but so i mean i'm not gonna say the original because like you know the original <laughs> like besides the original like yeah. you know because like, that is my favorite horror movie of all time favorite halloween movies halloween h2o uh i i love it i, I love h2o i will always defend h2o I think that it's got a really great transition from where Lori. I think it's got a really great believable transition as to where Lori is at mentally. Like, you know, like we, yes, we see that like she's very much like, or I should say John in the Haddonfield nightmare is very much like what she is in Halloween H2O. Like he teaches, she teaches, you know, yeah. and he's trying to forget about the past. She's trying to forget about the past. Like, you know, there's a lot of different stuff that I wanted to kind of like parallel with John and Lori, you know? Yeah. Um, but H2O, I just think it's got a really great believable Lori Strode character in it. I think that, you know, the way that the story plays out and it's very quick paced, it's got that really great opening sequence with Marion Chambers and everything. Um, you know, you give us a couple really cool off screen kills, even though the dude's like, I mean, you see the skate and uh, what's his face's head. And then it's just, you get the dude oh, yeah. that falls through the door. That's stupid. You know, that, that was dumb, but like, then at least, you, you know, you get a really good Marion chambers opening scene. Like when the cops get there, you just see the car pulling off the driveway. And then it's just classic Michael Myers, you know? Yeah. Um, and then, you know, you get into the meat of the story. I love Halloween H2O. I think that it's, it's a really damn good sequel. I don't think it gets enough love uh, in the franchise. And I truly only think the reason it doesn't, it's because of how Michael Myers looks you know, like, and that's pretty much it. Yeah. I, you hear a lot of like, because his mask changes so much and in a lot of the films. Um, yeah. I've definitely heard people talk, talk a lot of crap about the different, different Halloween masks. And I mean, it is what it is. Take it, take it for what it is. Like Michael Myers is just badass all around. Like, I don't mm -hmm. care what mask he's wearing. Like, um, and I, I think, yeah, you're right. H2O, it, it, it's like out of sight, out of mind. People don't talk about it enough. I mean, a lot of people are either like the new trilogy going on or like, you know, the, the original 
And then I've, I've met some people that are just like season of the witch, nothing to do with Michael Myers, but they're like, that's my favorite Halloween movie, you know? So yeah. Yeah. H2O is a great, great movie in the franchise. Yeah. And I mean, I, I will say, and I I'll defend those that like Halloween three. Cause I like Halloween three. Yeah. You know, like I think that it's a perfectly acceptable film for, um, for trying to be different, you know, cause like the yeah. plan after Halloween two is to be done with Michael Myers. Yeah. Not, it was supposed to be like an anthology series. That's yeah, what I've read. exactly. It was not, Michael was not supposed to come back and, hmm. you know, actually, Tom, I don't know if you saw this or not. Tommy Lee Wallace, the writer and director of Halloween three has a book coming out later on this year, actually. Oh. And he's actually, it's like, it's a, it's a biography of it's called Halloween three um the history it's like the history of um horrors most uh like it's like some title like that it's like horrors most um non-understanding film or something like that or something something like that like awesome. but it, i saw that and i was like that seems very interesting i definitely want to pick it up i definitely want to read it and um you know kind of see what uh see what he has to say you know like because honestly yeah. i truly think that that book even like even if like you like halloween 3 that book can really make you understand like why decisions were made and stuff like that you know like so yeah it's i think it's going to be out like in october or something like that so nice yeah no i i, I definitely enjoyed uh halloween 3 and then you know then i ended up stumbling on like an article where they were talking about how mm -hmm. you know how it was supposed to be like that anthology series and they were going to yeah. veer away from Michael Myers. And I'm like, okay, that, you know, that makes sense. And then like, it became like Michael Myers became more of a hot commodity and people really mm -hmm. loved Michael Myers. So then hell yeah, they're going to pursue, you know, yeah. what, what, what the people want. So yeah. I, I think for being like, it's, it's like its own standalone film. And yeah. I, I really enjoyed it. Yeah. It's, it's a misunderstood film. There you go. Yeah. It's uh, it, that's what it is. It's, it's a history of horrors, most misunderstood film. So oh, okay. that that's what it's going to be. And yeah, but I agree with you, man. I, I think that Halloween three, I, I, I mean, I'll defend anybody that likes that film. Cause I honestly, I was in the, I was in that boat in 2018 before I watched it again. I thought it was terrible. I thought it sucked. And mm -hmm. then I sat down and I watched it. I kind of shut my brain off. I, I let it play through as its own thing. Loved it. Loved it. So. Hell yeah. I actually didn't watch it until this last year. <laughs> really? It's like, I was way behind. Like, it's not that I didn't like want to watch it. Like, I don't know like what my reasoning was. Cause I, I didn't have any quarrel with it. I didn't have any beef, but like, I like watched all the other ones, but just never, never took the time to watch three. Mm -hmm. and I ended up buying like the uh the Halloween like two and three oh uh, yeah on DVD from like Walmart and I was like all right it's time to finally like sit down and watch this and mm -hmm. I was pleasantly surprised so yeah yeah no it, it it's good I, I I think that it needs a little bit more love too so hell yeah um so I think, you know, I originally I was going to ask, you know, what's next for, for you guys, but we've kind of, we've kind of actually delved into that a little bit on here. So I was like, shoot, that'd be just me rehashing the question. Um, I mean, I, I can tell you a little bit about, you know, like what's up and coming and what the plan yeah. is for, okay. you know, if, if you're interested. Yeah, no, I'm definitely interested. I just didn't want to like to ask and then you'd be like, well, we kind of already talked about that. I just, I was like, I didn't want to sound like I was like repeating anything this is your show man you know so <laughs> i mean it, no like I, I yeah sure we've delved a little bit into it but um like do you want me to answer it now or <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah no no phil yeah let's let's definitely let's let's dive into what's next for you guys yeah um so uh wrapping up right now just with like haddonfield perks and everything i'm I, i'm honestly ready to close the door with that you know like i've got like this week and next week of shipping and then we should be done with like all the perks getting out um so everything should be fulfilled um then that'll officially close the door with haddonfield and um you know then we've got my special boy coming out on uh october 28th so super excited oh, yeah. about that um, you know, I, I'm, I'm excited. And I know earlier I said that, like, you know, I kind of geared away from the acting 
like in college. But then like James asked me, he was like, you know, you said that you've acted before. Like I see you as this counselor or whatever. And I agreed, you know, I was like, you know what? Sure. Why not? So like, that's kind of like why I agreed to, you know, be, be in that. Um, we've got Sally coming up, which is, uh, already done filming. We filmed that, uh, about a month ago now, um, which is, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, an original short horror film, uh, from, from us. So, um, that's based on a childhood fear of mine. <laughs> oh, nice. Uh, so yeah, that'll be, I mean, the film's only going to be like 12 minutes or so. Um, but you know, like, I mean, still a lot of work that went into it. That's for sure. Um, and then, uh, really right now, what I'm working on is the sequel script to, uh, Haddonfield. So I'm working on Haddonfield nightmare two right now is, is wow. like what, yeah, I'm on, uh, I'm about half, probably just over halfway done with it. Uh, this time around, it's being co-written with one of our uh, director of photographies from Haddonfield, uh, Zach Dion. Um, he's uh, writing the script with me right now. We're on about page 52. Um, so yeah, we're pretty much like we just crossed that halfway point. The script is probably going to come in at about like 90 pages. That's what we're hitting, hitting for for this one. Um, so it'll be a feature it, like Haddonfield two won't be short. It, it's not going to be any shorter than, you know, the, uh, this last one, if anything, it'll come in either right at about the length of Haddonfield nightmare, um, or it'll be just a little bit longer. Um, but I, I will say that this one is pretty much where, and I've got some original ideas after, you know, um, uh, Haddonfield two and everything, but um, like, I'm kind of like putting those just kind of like, I'm, I have those like in my development, it's kind of like in my arsenal right now for what I want to work on. Um, but really right now it's like with Haddonfield kind of being fresh in people's minds and everything. Like, I don't want to rush Haddonfield too. like, we're really going to need all of the support that we can get when this campaign opens, because we're pretty much like, we want to try and hit like I'd say three times the budget that we had for this last one so I mean like um we're gonna need all hands on deck to really help us because like this next one it's crazy it's it's insane like you know uh some of the stuff that we want to do like we like that we want to pull off I mean it's so juicy that I don't want to cut any corners like yeah. I true, I truly will not roll a single camera like while we did with Haddonfield and some of the kills in Haddonfield, we actually had to like kind of <sighs> cut corners with, we had to cut corners with some of Haddonfield because of budgetary stuff, you know, but we were already shooting it. And I'm like, well, I'm not opening another campaign during production right now. Like I'm not doing that. But, um, so I'm going to make it very clear from the get go that like, until we have the funds to make Haddonfield two we're not rolling any sort of camera because, you know, we like, I, I don't want to sugarcoat this. I don't want to not give anybody what they deserve because I will say that sure Haddonfield nightmare was more of um, more of like an ode to the original Halloween. Uh, this next one, Michael is not fucking around. That's all. That's all I'm going to say. He just got it. I mean, if you think about it, John just beat his fucking head in with a crowbar and the man is still going to be up and walking around and he is coming out with a full fucking chip of vengeance on his shoulder. So, you know, I mean, he, he's going to be ready to rock. Um, nice. So, yeah, I mean, I'm definitely excited to, to move forward, you know, with these, those are the three projects, two of them are already done filming. And then the next big one that we have coming is, uh, is Haddonfield too. So, you know, that's, um, oh, yeah. Yeah, that, that's what we got up and coming. And then we've got some more stuff that'll be coming down the road. But I mean, I, I think that the one that people are going to care about the most is sure, my special boy. And then uh, Haddonfield uh, is going to be a, a big one. So hell yeah, that's awesome. I'm excited for you guys. I'm excited to see the next chapter in this. And uh, I definitely want to check out the other stuff too. Um, but I yeah, I, I got to say I'm most most excited for the Haddonfield Nightmare 2. Um, though my special boy, I mean, I don't know much about it, but like anything Jason, I'm in. So <laughs> I think I think you're gonna get a kick out of this one, man. I mean, like, you know, I mean it's 
it's funny because like you know i've got viewers that are like oh dude it's Braden versus jason or whatever and i'm like that's pretty much what it is man it's like you know it's like there's a there's going to be some juicy moments in it and I'm, I'm excited for everyone to you know see what uh what we cooked up and i mean chad is jason man he's just he's so awesome and it's just i always find it hilarious because my girlfriend she fucking hates like horror and everything like and <laughs> like she won't watch it like i oh. mean well she lives alone right now so she just like i mean she doesn't really help her she doesn't help herself at all because she sleeps with her door open and she looks at her door that has like a light outside and she always like expects to see a shadow like outside I'm like you don't do yourself any justice by doing that you know that right <laughs> like um you're setting yourself up for late nights <laughs> yeah, exactly so um what do you call it like when i move and she lives in arizona right now so when i move out there like maybe she'll start watching them like i'm trying to get her to like, I honestly would say that Halloween, the original Halloween is a good ease and uh, everything, even though the music is scary. I think that it's the right amount of scary to be like, OK, like, you know, or even stuff like if people are getting into it nowadays, like I always recommend stuff like Happy Death Day, like just mm -hmm. lighthearted horror stuff that just kind of like eases like them into, OK, like, oh, well, this is kind of funny. And then, oh, my God, like this is actually kind of thrilling, you know, like yeah. just to kind of get their heart racing a little bit just to see like what it's like. Um, so that's honestly what we might start with, because I think that that's a, either that or, or I, I don't know if I could start with Scream because she won't stay home alone if she watches. Not from the opening of Scream. She will not stay home alone <laughs> from, from that. So, right. Um, but uh, yeah, like I, I just think that um, like the way that uh, so Chad is he, he's he's great as Jason. And I mean, I'm excited to showcase like, you know, what um like what we uh what we cooked up with i had a lot of fun writing that story so sweet i i'm stoked <laughs> um and i really do appreciate uh once again you you taking the time to chit chat with me and kind of you know answer some questions and and give us some insight on the haddonfield nightmare and you know a little bit about you so thank you again yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Anytime I'd be, I, I'm happy to, you know, come on the show anytime, just reach out and, you know, we'll work out something. So. Hell yeah. Well, um, I hope you have a killer rest of your night. I know there's like a little bit of a time difference between us a couple hours. Um, I know you're probably getting tired. I don't know how late you usually stay up. So <laughs> uh, I'm up late all the time. So okay. you know, I'm up early in the morning and up late at night. So I, I, try and get five hours every night that's pretty much like my <laughs> my sleep schedule so for sure all well awesome well hey have a killer rest of your night man and uh i'll talk to you soon and I'm, I'm excited for everyone to see this episode yeah absolutely thank you and i hope that you have a great night too take care thank you oh oh sorry before we go um you said that they can do this campaign um what is the uh the link for that campaign Oh, the campaign for, so right now the, my special boy one is uh, open right now. If you go to Indiegogo.com, you guys can search my special boy. Uh, we are going to be in demand. So, you know, for the first time in a, my special boy campaign, we're going to be in demand. If you guys want to get Blu-rays and posters and t-shirts and hoodies, you guys can do that uh, on Indiegogo right now. Um, we do have a Sally post-production campaign opening here soon. Um, you know, to raise funds for post-production because post-production cost is not cheap. Um, and then we will have a Haddonfield 2 campaign opening sometime early next year. Um, so, you know, like we're, again, we're still in pretty early development. We really want to shoot a, a really good and exciting teaser, nothing too crazy, but, you know, just to kind of showcase people the vibe that we're going with, with this next one. Um, and I'm really excited to start giving story details. I really do think that people are going to be excited with like where we're going and, you know, like just how this next chapter is going to go. So, uh, very excited about everything up and coming. Um, thank you guys all for your support, um, and everything. Um, so be sure to check out my special boy when it drops on October 28th though. Hell yeah. And you guys, uh, yeah, like he said, definitely go give them some love. Uh, they definitely deserve it. And uh, if you haven't seen the Haddonfield Nightmare yet, uh, go check it out on YouTube. It's a it's a wonderful watch, especially if you're a fan of Halloween H two O. Like like we've said, it picks up where that that kind of left off, and uh, 
we get to see kind of John in the future. And uh, yeah, it's a great time. So definitely check it out, show them some love and uh, keep killing it out there. My friends just remember, don't get caught. <laughs>